that's all I have. If do you guys have any questions, So ProDFM is a microbial. Essentially, it's yogurt for bees. Super effective. Like scientifically proven effective. We have um, gut problems or gut health, right? We might take yogurt or um, build up some of that good bacteria after we've been on an antibiotic. Doctor might say, hey, you know, up your yogurt, build that back up a little bit. So that's what we do, right? And we know the benefits it has on our gut. So ProDFM is a microbial. And essentially what it does is it cleans up the gut health of the bees. Because there is so much human management in order to keep a healthy bee colony through medications, that's gonna knock their good bacteria down. Stress is gonna knock their good bacteria down. A honey flow is gonna knock their good bacteria down because it's stressful. <laughs> it's like go time for them, right? So there's a lot of things that happen throughout the year that are stressful to the bees. The way Pro DFM works is you sprinkle it on the frames, but here's the key. You need to do it about five to six times a year per hive and then you always have to do it two weeks after the stress event or else good is gonna cancel out bad and you're just gonna flush your money down the toilet, right? You're not gonna get the benefit of the microbial. So when I'm treating with a mite medication and I'm gonna use Apivar and I put my Apivar strips in the hive, right? When I take them out, if I put on ProDFM, and all you do is sprinkle it on the top bars. There's really nothing else to it. Um, there, that's a waste of money. So what I would do there is in my iPhone or Android, I would just set a little reminder from two weeks. And then when I go back in there on that second, that second week gap, I'll put that in. That's when you're gonna see the benefit. But like you said, um, you will not see the benefit after one or two times because it's like, if you see the benefit, if I eat healthy for one week, I'm gonna say to my wife, man, I should have, I've been eating healthy for a whole week, right? And she's gonna say, yeah, right. Try eating healthy for a longer time. If I eat healthy for a longer period of time, I'm gonna look better, right? Same way that works. So if you're consistently hitting it in, you know, um, oh, spring flow is over. Around July 15th, when I go in to check my feed, I'll sprinkle them with some pro DFM. You get, you, you know, oh, they keep coming out of the winter. They're overwintered. They're taking off early spring. Oh, maybe I hit them with a little pro DFM. And it's something that you work into the diet of the bees. Yep. So that's a loaded question because there's a lot of different variables for queen health. Um, first, it's gonna be dependent on her mating flight. Remember when your queen gets mated, she gets mated for life with 17 or 18 drones. So she'll have a certain amount of semen in her body, okay? If the queen goes out and it's that um, she gets stuck in a mid-afternoon Florida rain and there's not enough drones and she gets mated with eight drones, there's no way to know when she comes back into that hive because she's gonna lay at a rate like, some, like a queen that was mated with, more, with uh, more drones, but she's gonna end quicker, right? Typically queens live about, they say three to five years. I think more realistically, it would be about two to three years. And I think in the Southeast, you'd be looking at, it would be in your best interest to requeen uh, probably almost yearly, okay? And it's, um, and that's just going to eliminate potential problems that you might just not wanna deal with down the line.
You should only check your mites once every two months when, you're, um, when you have a handful of hives. If you are a migratory beekeeper, you're a commercial beekeeper, every truck that they have has two or three of those. It's common practice because you're dealing with thousands of hives. They are all outbreaking at different times. You just, every time you're in a hive, you're checking because they're exposed to a lot more different things. If you've got one or two hives, you don't need to check every week. Yeah, I, I would be checking you know, every month to two months and just a habit of checking. Those 300 bees, more than 300 bees die naturally every day than the 300 that you're going to intentionally kill, right? But you don't need to like overdo it though, yeah. Um, check mite is effective when you're treating for hive beetle. Ironically, check mite, but hive beetle. Um, Comifos was one of the only medications on the market along with flavalvinate many years ago. So there were all of these beehives and two options and they were used by everybody. And they never realized years ago that flavalvinate and Comifos don't break down in the wax. Because they don't break down in the wax, over 10 years, mites developed a, a complete resistance to them. So essentially, check mite will not be effective at all on mites. You should be in your hives every week. Yes. When, I, when people get started, I tell, you know, it's not like a dog, right? We're not gonna be in our hive three, four times a day. But um, we're, I mean, if you have two or three hives, you should be able to give yourself 30, 40 minutes a week to go in there and check them. Because again, that goes back to my point about being proactive. When you don't check them frequently, um, not like every day, but you know, within a reasonable amount of time, it, you're, you're automatically reactive, right? Because you're saying, oh my gosh, my mites are nine per 100. Well, four weeks ago, they might have only been two. And four weeks ago, you have a, a, an easy problem, and now you have a, a problem. And all that was managed by you going in or not going in. Do you see what I'm, right, what I'm getting at? And what you would do here is you would put this out about 50 feet, 100 feet away from your hive. And your bees are gonna go forage on it like they would on natural pollen. Bring it back into the hive and turn it into bee bread. Yes. What's that called That's called ultra bee dry. Now, you could put it in a little, um, lots of people will put it on, in like a five gallon bucket and put the bucket on its side and then maybe put it up on a picnic table, you know, something uh, uh, out of the way and the bees will forage in. You can go to Lowe's, get um, two or three inch PVC pipe. And what you do is one side, you get a cap for it, a plumber cap. So you cap it and you get two little hooks, like you're gonna hang a picture and a little fishing twine or a little rope and you leave one side open. Then you can hang it in a tree and it's protected from rain. And when you see, you can just lift it up and you've got that cap right on the bottom and you can just put a little bit more pollen in and put that, hang it in a tree. That's an option. Sometimes people will just take dry pollen and just put it out on a table. You're gonna feed a lot of things that way. <laughs> if you go that route, you're gonna need a queen excluder, metal or plastic. Metal is always gonna be more expensive, but you're gonna 
it's a couple dollars more, but you'll get more time use out of it. Plastic is gonna be cheaper, and you'll probably use it once, uh, one year, one or two years, it's three or four bucks, maybe five, and then it'll go, okay? But you're gonna put an excluder on that hive, so that way the queen doesn't come and lay eggs up in your super. So what happens is we will traditionally put our queen excluder on. Great. I'm going to take my honey super and put it on it. And I come back in a week and I go, my gosh, they're not even up here. How many, does that happen to people before? Yes. yes, everyone's shaking their head. There you go, good. Now I know you're going home with something valuable. Here's the trick. When you decide to add your honey super and your queen excluder, you go out there, you put your box on first, like that, with no queen excluder. Your queen's not going up there. What do we talk about? There's no bed for her to lay. There's nothing up there. So you know who's going up there? Worker bees. And they're gonna start hitting and touching these frames. And as soon as they do, you never have to worry about them not seeing it as available space. So what I tell people is you put your super on Sunday morning, come back Wednesday or Thursday, right? Take it off. Make sure your queen's not on there. If she is, you're gonna, it's because there's not gonna be an overwhelming amount of bees and confusion. Then you put your excluder on. Then you put your box back on and your bees, they don't even see that excluder. They go right through. That's a trick, okay?